What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're talking about a very real topic. And that is, is this economy in this upcoming recession the end of the reptile industry? Everywhere on the news we see the world is ending, the market is crashing, the economy is crashing, inflation rates are up. And this is a topic we need to talk about. Right now, if you go on Morph Market today, there's almost 50,000 ball pythons available. There's approximately 4,000 boas. This is something that was brought to my attention by the guys that work with me, Zach and Greg, Nick. We were talking about this the other day, although I didn't have really any thoughts to put into it. So I kind of reflected back on that conversation that we had, and I said, you know, this is, this is a video that needs to be made. With this, I wanna talk about the market as a whole, the market health, can you sell your snakes? Are people selling snakes? Are people buying snakes? And I know this is something we've discussed in bits and pieces of videos, but it's starting to become a real panic amongst some people. I'm seeing prices crashing, I'm seeing people quitting and getting out, selling their whole collections. I've even seen people giving away their collection, I'm just done. What's sparking this? Is it the economy, is it not? Let's talk about it. So. I don't think that this is the end of the reptile industry. Actually, I think this is a turn for something amazing for the reptile industry. Now, there are people being overproducers. They're overproducing just anything because they think that's how the market works. But that has always been there. If you look and you see 50,000 ball pythons on Morph Market, one person to one way to look at this is that that means stuff's not moving. The other way to look at this is that means there's a whole lot of people in the hobby. Now, there's also kind of a middle ground answer to that is there's a lot of people in the hobby, they're expanding quickly and they can't sell their animals. But when you look at these animals, they're not very old. So that's another key piece to this is that there's 50,000 ball pythons and who knows how many corn snakes and other things. But that doesn't necessarily mean stuff isn't selling. That just means there's a lot of production happening. I would be interested to see how much is selling, and I know there's a way to do that, I'm just not as savvy with Morph Market. But when we're looking at this, the big key to becoming a reptile breeder is you have to create your industry. I think the issue is that there's a handful of people creating the industry, I'm gonna throw myself in that category, I'm producing content for you guys, and I don't care if you like it or you don't, this is content that I guarantee you if you listen to, it will help you. It's just something, you don't need to like my opinion, you don't need to like what I'm producing, I don't really care if you like it or not, but I'm giving you real information based on my experience in the industry to date. Now this could change in 10 years because the industry is always evolving, but as a whole, large production means there's a lot of people in this space. At the same time, in order to sell these animals, you need to create your own mini market. You know, you need to bring in new customers. You can't just put your snakes in a rack, buy snakes from somebody, and then post them up after you've made babies. It doesn't work that way, especially in certain industries like boas and boa construction in general. Ball pythons was a little bit different. The industry for ball pythons is and always has been very large, but that's because there's been this somewhat easier return on investment concept with that. I can buy a hundred ball pythons, you know, 90 of them being females, 10 of them being high-end males, put those males to all my females, produce 50 to 75 clutches at six to 10 babies a piece on average, and I can make myself a whole bunch of money. It works that way, but it doesn't because you need to create the industry that's gonna move and sell those babies. And that's the piece that I think a lot of people are not contributing to. They're buying the animals, which is great. It's supporting the person. They're buying it, they're producing the babies, they're successful, they're, they're really dumping the funds into the market, buying racks and cages and mice and feeders and snakes from all these people. And then it comes time to make their own and sell their own babies. But what they haven't done is contributed. They haven't grown the market. They haven't taught others how to breed. They haven't taught others how to produce babies and sell their babies and how to make money in that sector. And really, a lot of the folks getting into it at some scale, they're putting money before passion. And that's, I think, a big driver is they're not seeing the market holistically and what they need to do to really push it. So we've, we've veered a little bit off topic, but it's really really important to understand that component that you're going to get out what you put in and if you don't put in anything other than money you're not going to get that money out you need to put money time and effort and education component in order to really 
thrive in this business. You just have to. And that was a lesson that I've learned. That's a lesson that I've observed from others is that the people who put in the time and the effort to educate and to grow the market, to do the videos, to make the social media posts, you don't need to have a million followers on social media. You don't need to have a hundred. You just need to have 10 good followers and then they can expand out. It's the ultimate network marketing in one sense or the ultimate pyramid scheme. And I don't want to use that concept because it's not a pyramid scheme. It is a business, but it's the ultimate network marketing concept is you need to get your own clientele. And if you don't have your clientele, trying to steal one from somebody else because your price is lower is just a losing concept because then the whole prices go down. And yes, your market is going to be closed at that point. Lowering prices is a short-sighted way to sell animals. Can it work to get your foot in the door? Sure it can, but it's not long. It's not to, in the best interest of you, your business, or the market. If you're just in it to make a bunch of babies, sell your stuff, and get out, go for it. Lower your prices. Drop them down. There were comments in the last video where people were saying, I'm just mad that people are trying to undercut me. I'm not. I'm honestly, I'm looking out for you when I say this, that it is a very, very short-sighted piece and component to the market. If you're selling a house, yeah, sure, sell it next, sell it cheaper than the person next to you. But what does that do to the whole market? The whole market gets driven down. And now with the prices going up, inflation going up, the cost of feeders, cost of electric, cost of everything going up, that is the ultimate demise of our reptile industry. Is if we continue to drive prices down because people are contributing animals to the market but not their time and education component, what's gonna happen is the cost is gonna go up, the profits are gonna go down, and there's gonna be no animals left. And I am in a situation where I can hang tight for that. What will happen is the market will flip and it will reverse itself and it will explode. That's been proven. Look at all the BCC bows. Look at all the stuff that's crazy expensive right now. Years ago, you couldn't give it away because it was being overproduced, over imported. No education was being done. People were trying to compete with each other. Certain bows, you know, wild caught, they were selling for. I don't know, $25 to $100. Now you can't even touch them. They're five, six, seven hundred dollars Captive bred animals, multiple thousands of dollars. That's because all the people that were producing them couldn't make the money because people continued to undercut, drive the price down. There was no profit left. People stopped producing them. It couldn't be found anywhere. The people who hung in there like myself hung in there, continued to do our own thing, breed them, keep animals back, keep them, whatever it was, and now that there's none to be found, the prices are skyrocketing. Look at all the locality stuff. It's a perfect example of what will happen to the market if you guys don't nurture it. The market is a fire, and if you don't continue to put fuel on it and poke it and prod it, it's going to die out. And then someone will come in behind you and light it again, but once that fire's burnt out for you, it's going to be really hard to rekindle it because you let it die. So with all that said, guys, I don't want to continue to ramble, but this is such a critical component is the industry as a whole is really strong. My months have been the best months I've ever had in the past you know, five to six months, but I've been contributing to the market. I've been growing my customer base. I've been educating to the extent I can with the platform that I have. And there's too much animosity in the market. There's too much, I can't share your stuff because you're taking my customer. No, share each other's stuff, grow together. The stronger we grow, the more social media pushes everybody's stuff. The more people see this and get interest in it. The mindset of, I cannot share your stuff, I cannot like your posts, needs to go away. This is an old mindset. This is a mindset that put us into the situation that happened in 2008, 2009, when ball pythons were selling for tens of thousands of dollars, and all of a sudden, nobody could sell stuff anymore because it was too cutthroat. Nobody wanted to lose that $10,000 sale to a competitor. But the way I see it is, nobody's gonna buy every animal from me. So I want you guys to sell your animals. I want others to sell their animals because as you sell your stuff, people are gonna find me. As I sell my stuff, people are gonna find you. The more the market, the more the industry grows, the better we all are. And for some reason, the reptile folks don't understand this concept. It's too cutthroat. It's too kind of, this is my market. These are my customers. I don't wanna share your stuff. People, you know, we need to support each other. So again, that is where I feel the market is going. This is not the end 
of the reptile market. If anything, more people are gonna join because the economy is hard and people are gonna look for alternative ways to make money. There's money here. I'm telling you, you can make a lot of money in the reptile industry. It's treated me very well, but at the same time, you need to contribute to it. And if you're not contributing, you're not gonna make that money. It's just like everything else in life. What you put in is what you get out. And this is a market that sure follows that pattern. So with all that said, guys, make sure to support this channel by giving it a share, a thumbs up, a like, drop a comment. If you're looking for an animal, check out my website, jasonsexoticreptiles.com. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one mentoring or community mentoring, I have that on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jasonsexoticreptiles. My patrons are in the description below. I appreciate you guys. We're building a community. I hope the more you guys put in, the more I can share your stuff, create a YouTube channel. I wanna promote your stuff too. Thank you for watching. Until next week, we'll talk it then. Let's keep it moving.